Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things sustainable, eco-friendly and consumer conscious. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of a different video where I take you on the trip with us to the Polish mountains in the south and how we kept the trip a little bit more sustainable than we would normally. This kind of feeds back to my promise from a long, long time ago about showing you how we travel by train in Europe. So it's all going to be part of that. This video will hopefully show you that traveling by train is actually a very convenient way to travel, at least in Europe. You don't have to fly everywhere and that way you are reducing your impact on the carbon dioxide emissions and your own carbon footprint. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen in my stories that it's so easy to travel by train in Europe. We have done it. We went to Prague from Warsaw in October, but I unfortunately erased all of the footage by accident. So this time I did not, and I'm going to show you the train inside and our experience on it. As well, you'll see a lot of beautiful landscapes of snowy winter wonderland and our Christmas time down the south. So I hope you really enjoy it stick around. If you are into sustainable living, eco-friendly things, uh, lifestyle and beauty that is low waste, consider subscribing down below and liking this video. So we first boarded the train in Warsaw and headed off to Krakow. We actually chose to take first class train tickets on the way there and second class tickets on the way back. And here I'm showing you the difference between second class and first class. This is second class. As you can see, it's more crowded, lots of luggage everywhere. And this is first class where the seats are a little bit more spread out. And this is the dining room cart, which was really nice. A lot of Poland on along the train tracks looks like this. And here we are in Krakow. It is gorgeous here. It was real Christmas town with lights everywhere. And of course, the amazing Christmas market. This is the second Christmas market we've been to in Poland. And so far, it's my favorite with all kinds of goodies present like chocolate, chocolate covered fruit, of course, hot wine, very, very sustainable ornaments. These were all made from wood. These decorations were all made from just natural resources. These are the nesting dolls that I was telling you about in my stocking stuffer video for toddlers and gorgeous, gorgeous ornaments, completely made of glass, hand painted. We didn't get any because again, we have a toddler glass ornaments do not mix with a toddler. I thought this was a really cool find. Crayons made from completely natural materials. Food galore, you guys. Bread with butter and fried onion on top. Lots of meat if you're a meat eater. Of course, the famous Polish kibasa and pickles. This is grilled cheese. So it's smoked cheese that is then grilled and served with um, cranberry sauce. The famous soup stall at Krakow Christmas Market actually serves soup with wooden spoons and paper cups. So we didn't feel so bad about getting those every time we had soup. They are not plastic lined, so this was really, really great. And of course, I brought my own cups every time we knew we were going to be at the Christmas market and we knew if we were going to be at the Christmas market we were probably going to have hot wine. So I made sure that I brought my own cups. The lights were everywhere. My son enjoyed walking around and looking at all the lights and here he is pushing our stroller and we just enjoyed hanging out in the old time for most part. We took a little carriage ride with the horse around the old town and it was just really beautifully lit and we felt so Christmassy doing it. Of course, in every European city, you have the Pigeon Square. So we fell a little bit of a victim to all the guys there who were selling pigeon feed. We could not get out a couple of times because we were just so surrounded by the pigeons. But of course, it's super fun for the kids. Here, I am wearing everything secondhand, you guys. Everything except for the jeans actually is secondhand. I try to put my son on skates and have him enjoy this winter sport, but he is still too little. As you can see, he's very wobbly and we just kind of mainly 
pushed him around on the ice. One of the days I decided to take a little detour and actually look at some of the Holocaust uh, history around Krakow. And I took a little walk to the other side of the city. My goal was to see the Ghetto Heroes Square. There are 33 empty chairs that are uh, on the square. And every single one represents a thousand people who were killed as a result of the Nazi occupation and the ghetto in the Krakow city. Uh, the only person who was non-Jewish who was in the ghetto was the pharmacy owner of this pharmacy, Tadeusz Pankiewicz, and he was actually really influential in helping the Jews with getting supplies in. He is considered to be a ghetto hero. This was my Holocaust kind of experience in Krakow. I really enjoyed it because it was kind of Holocaust light. After having spent four days in Krakow, we called a taxi because we couldn't take a further train to Zakopane because we have a toddler and they require to have a car seat for the bus leg of the train, which is very little. Nevertheless, we didn't want to cart the car seat with us because it's still one of those huge cart seats that we have to bring with us. So instead, we ordered a taxi and it was four people in the taxi. So I felt it was better than just, you know, like two people driving in the taxi. And they took us all the way to our hotel in Zakopane. So then we boarded the taxi and ended up in Zakopane and that is a really, really traditional looking mountain town with everything made of wood, like big chunky wood. We promptly went up to the closest hill and we took the little car up the hill. As you can see, there was no snow when we came, but two days later, it started to snow and it didn't stop. So this is what it looked like on the other days for the rest of our time there. We were there for a week and it was just perfect, perfect snowy winter wonderland the whole time. It was thick, wet, perfect for making snowballs. And because it snowed just before Christmas, it made everything looking very, very magical. I couldn't stop making videos of all the panoramas that we kept seeing on all the mountains. There was about a foot of snow by the time we left, just after Christmas. It was very, very beautiful. It made having hot wine in Zakopane very, very special. It was my son's first time seeing snow. So now I'm gonna show you some footage of him playing in the snow and it was just incredible to see how he at first didn't know what to do with it. He couldn't even walk in the snow because he has never done that before. He is sitting around kind of just touching the snow, not understanding what it is and just feeling it, feeling the texture, uh, looking at how it behaves. It was super adorable watching him do this. Of course, he loved jumping in the snow and being kind of tossed in the snow. It, he had the time of his life. Of course, I tried out some skiing lessons in Zakopane. Zakopane skiing is for beginners, I would say, or people who don't want to have too much of a thrill because all the hills are pretty easy, I would say. We, of course, took endless walks, having a toddler again, in the village, up in the mountains, and um, it was just so beautiful. What would we be if we didn't take the Christmas sleigh ride? And here we are doing that. Of course, every single evening we went out for a traditional food, and overall it was just a very, very amazing experience with beautiful people, architecture and environment. Again, with our whole being trying to lead a sustainable lifestyle as a family, we wanted to stay local, at least in the country for Christmas holidays. We didn't want to be those jet setters who are always just leaving the country as soon as they can. And it really, really paid off. We felt super Christmassy in Poland. As you can see, there was a lot of snow, so that added to the atmosphere and we took the train. Additionally, um, I packed really sustainable toiletries with me and that video is popping up in the cards right now and I'll link it down below. So I think overall we kind of 
ended 2019 on a very good, positive, sustainable note. And I'm really looking forward to the 2020 We Have Plenty hashtag challenge that is coming up and I'm gonna talk about it in my next video. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. I know it was really different. It was just really a vlog of our experience, but I hope you still enjoyed it. So I hope you will join me again next week on Sunday, where I'll talk about the 2020 We Have Plenty hashtag and what I'm doing about it. See you next time. Bye.